Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be doing a full guide for MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner on the latest versions 4.4 for Afterburner and version 7 for Reva Tuner because this has been highly requested recently. Even though I've done a guide in the past on Afterburner, there have been some new features added like being able to monitor your frame rates and everything with a graph overlay on the screen. You can actually apply this to a couple of the overlay options, but the frame rate is the one that is of most interest to me, maybe frame times as well. But a lot of people have been asking, how do you get that graph overlay? And the short answer to that question is to just use the latest Verner of Afterburner and Reva Tuner. But I'm going to be doing a full breakdown of how to get it set up, how to customize it and make it look good and everything with all of your settings. So I've set my Afterburner to the default settings so that I can kind of walk you guys through the, f the full thing from start to finish. Now, of course, you do have to download MSI Afterburner, which you can get over on the Guru 3D website. And if you just scroll all the way to the bottom, you can get the latest release version, which is 4.4.0. And that will also have the latest version of Reva Tuner bundled in with it, which we, can, which we can use to customize the look and appearance of our overlay. And also, I just quickly want to mention that if you guys want to save any money on games this holiday season and support the channel in the process, be sure to head over to my affiliate link to cdkeys.com, which I'm going to leave at the top of the description below. So if you want to pick any games up and save yourself a few bucks, like on Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, which is only $35 right now, go ahead and hit up my affiliate link in the description below. Now, I also did want to show you one more link, which I'm going to have down there. It's how to custom. It's a link to be able to customize the look of it. So you can actually get skins for MSI Afterburner. You can get any one that you want, but I use the dark flat skin. It's the big edition. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link to this and I'll show you how to install this too. But if you want to download the same one that I like to use, you can go ahead and grab it over here on DeviantArt. So that'll be down there for you too. But let's get into MSI Afterburner, which I have in its stock configuration right now. And I've got the Heaven benchmark here running next to it so all of our changes will show up in real time and you you might be able to notice that there's no overlay on here right now it's because by default there is no overlay you have to set options in afterburner and reva tuner to be able to get it to work so the first thing i like to do in afterburner is just go into the settings icon which is the little cog wheel right here so if you click that the first thing i like to do is just get the user interface the way that i like it which as i said is a custom skin so i'm going to go ahead and put that on it's the dark flat skin big edition by grum d and hit ok and that'll go ahead and apply right there. Now, how do you install skins? I'll just quickly go ahead and show you. Once you get your skin of choice downloaded, all you want to do is go to where you have Afterburner installed. So for me, it's Program Files x86 and go to MSI Afterburner. There it is. And then the skins folder and you just copy and paste your .usf file in here into this folder right there. And then it should appear right in the drop down menu. And you shouldn't even have to restart Afterburner for it to show up. It should just be in there right away. Now, a couple other things I like to do when I first get Afterburner is installed is I like to set it to start with Windows, start minimized, and also unlock voltage control and voltage monitoring. If that's something that's important to you, you can do that. Once you do that, you do have to restart Afterburner just for those effects to come on. So I'll hit OK and restart Afterburner now and reopen it here once it becomes restarted. There we go. So now it's up and now I can monitor my voltages and I can adjust these if I wanted to. So we've got all of that in there. And if we go back into the settings, there's one more thing I always do with Afterburner with any graphics card that I'm using is I use Afterburner's custom fan curve, which I don't adjust at all, but I always tick this box right here because I find it does give cooler temps. Even though the fans will ramp up a bit more, it will give cooler temperatures overall. So once you hit that tick box and hit okay, you'll see my fan speed goes up right there because I am running a benchmark right here in Ultra, so it's, it's pretty taxing. So it's gonna ramp up your fan speeds a little bit, if you do put that on, but it'll keep your GPU temperatures better overall at the end of the day. But let's get into the monitoring tab, which most of you are probably here for to find out about the overlay, the graph and all of that. And we'll get started with that right away. Now to get it, all you want to do is go to the bottom, which is where the frame rate and frame time is stored by default. They don't even have this ticked on. So you definitely want to check those so that they're on and click frame rate. And we do want to put it as a uh, show an on-screen display. So that's the first thing we want to do. You want to do that for the frame times as well. Now, the order that you have these in here will affect how they appear on here. And for me personally, I like to have the frame rate as the very first row on here. So if you just grab it and drag it up to the top, you can put it in the first row. And we'll do that with the frame times as well. You just click it with your left, your left click on your mouse, hold it, and then use your scroll wheel. And that'll help you get to the top a lot faster. So you can put it right up there. And then you've got your frame rate 
and your frame time. Now we've got that set to on-screen display, so we'll go ahead and hit OK, and you'll see that it will come up on here right there. So there we have it in the on-screen display. Now to get the graph, you do want to come in here and there is now a new context box over here. So next to the show on-screen display, you can see we have a drop down for text, graph, or combo. Now I like to use the combo so it'll have the text as well as the graph, which will go to the bottom of everything. So I'll put it on combo right now and then hit OK, and then it will have both. So now we have a frame rate graph as well as the frame rate in text. Now there are a couple other things I like to do with this as well. The first off, the colors in here, I'm not a fan of this color scheme that they're using honestly. Even though I've got a custom color scheme set in RevaTuner, the new modern layout kind of spaces everything out, it changes the colors around and it's just not something I'm a fan of and you can customize this. So if you click the three dots right next to that combo drop down box here, you can actually go through on the modern layout and you could change a bunch of options in here to be able to customize the colors and the size of everything to your heart's content. So if you want to spend hours, you know, customizing this, you can go at it. But personally, I just like to use the classic layout and then that'll set it to whatever I have set in RevaTuner, which is just a yellow color scheme. So there it is. We've got the yellow color scheme that I like to use. And there's one more thing I like to do in here because you can see, you can see this frame rate graph is kind of sticking out really far past our statistics up here. So there is a way to change that. If you come down to the bottom in here, you can see under graph object, we have the width. By default, that's set to negative 32. The value that I found works best for me is to set it to negative 15 and then hit apply. And then it'll shorten it and it's kind of within line with the rest of the text that we have in here. So that's great. That's how I like to do that personally. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and close out of that. Now there are other things I like to monitor as well. And there's a certain order I like to do everything. I like to have the GPU next, followed by the memory, and then lastly the CPU. So in order to do that, we just kind of want to reorganize things. So I'll go ahead and put GPU usage there. And then after GPU usage, I'll put the core clock. And then we've got the GPU temperature below that as well. And to get those enabled, we just have to do what we did with frame rates and frame time. So we click GPU usage, show an on-screen display, core clock, show an on-screen display, as well as the temperature show in the OSD. So now we've got all of those enabled. Um, I also do like to do the memory usage. So I'll go ahead and drag that up. And then the memory clock, I'll do that as well. And there are just a couple more for the CPU. So I like to do my overall CPU usage on my personal rig. So I will go ahead and look for that now, if I could find it in here. Okay, so there it is, CPU usage. You can do it by individual cores and threads if you want to, but for my personal system, I just like to do overall CPU usage. I find that that just works works perfectly fine. If I was doing benchmarking, I would probably, um, you know, show things in a little bit more detail. I accidentally put that in front of memory clock, so we'll go ahead and drag that down below it, if I can actually do it. Come on, you can do it. There we go, memory usage, memory clock. CPU usage, I also like to put my CPU temperature, so we've got that right here. I'll go ahead and drag up and look for right there underneath CPU usage. And then finally, the CPU clock, I'll go ahead and put that in the monitoring as well. That's the last one that we'll have to do in here. And then we just have to go through these and hit show in the on-screen display for all of these different options. And once we have them all turned on, we can go ahead and hit OK and that will put them all in our on-screen display. Now this is a little bit hard to read right now and by default you'll actually have even a different color. So in order to customize that you just want to come down to your system tray and hit the little RevaTuner icon that'll open that up onto your screen and you can start customizing this. So the on-screen display palette you can see right here now I have set to a sort of yellow color. I'm not sure what it is by default. I think it's like maybe orangey but you can change this to whatever you want. If you want it to be white pink, orange, purple, green, really doesn't matter in anything in between. You can set all that in here and it will change the color of the lettering in your on-screen display. And to change the fonts, you want to make sure that you're in raster 3D. When you first open RevaTuner, you'll probably be in vector 2D, which is not very friendly on the eyes and not very easy to read. So you want to go into raster 3D and you can customize any of the fonts that you want in here. I'm personally using the GeForce font, which is the basically GeForce GTX font from NVIDIA. That's the one I happen to be using. I also will tend to use Seago UI Bold as well, which you've probably seen most of my benchmark videos. But on my personal rig, I use the GeForce font. It looks pretty nice and modern. Go ahead and hit OK, and then that'll be applied if you are setting it for the first time. Now, a couple other things I like to do in here is stealth mode. This will help out with certain games like Rainbow Six Siege comes to mind if there's an anti-cheat measure. Sometimes they might identify this overlay as maybe something that they should block. 
So if you use the stealth mode, it'll help you get it enabled. I've never been banned from a single game for using this though, so you shouldn't have any concerns about that. Um, and I also like to do the on-screen display shadow, which makes it a lot easier to read the text there. You see if I click it off and on, it just puts a black highlight around all the text, so it makes it a little bit easier to read and kind of pop out a bit. If that's still a little hard for you to read, you can set the on-screen display fill. If you want, you could set that on and it'll put like a little background behind it there and you can customize the color of that as well as the on in the on-screen display palette. It's the third little dot over, so you can change the color of this if you want. And the opacity, I set mine to 15% opacity and it is not that evident, you know, it's not like a big black block behind it, which you never really want. You want to have at least transparent in some degree, I would say. And 15% on black seems to look okay to me, but it's not something I typically will use, but if you want to use it, the option is certainly there. And lastly in here, you can also adjust the size of the font in your on-screen display. So if you want, you can just kind of drag this around and you can get whatever size you want. If you want it as small as possible, you can certainly drag it down and have it really tiny. Um, for 1440p, I usually set it right about here. And you can reposition it on the screen as well if you want. You can do it vertically as well as horizontally. If I was doing one of my benchmark side-by-side -side videos where I'm recording, I would usually want this in the middle. So for like 1440p, the value I would usually set in here is 1100 which you'll see has gone off the screen because it's a much smaller uh, resolution right here right now. But usually this would be right in the middle if I set it to 1100 or 1440p. But for just regular use, if you're not trying to make side-by-side -side comparison videos like I do, you would just want to probably leave this at default at one by one. So that's pretty much all you got to do in RevaTuner. And there are just a couple more little things that I like to kind of tie up here in, in Afterburner before we get out of here. Um, one is the on-screen display. If you go into the on-screen display tab in here, you could set an on-screen display toggle button, which I personally like to use page up. So if you just click in this box right here and then select your key of choice, it'll then apply that. So if you just hit page up now, whenever you're in a game, it'll automatically get rid of the OSD and page up it once again, we'll bring it right back on. So I always do that pretty much in any system that I'm using that I'm using this on so I can get rid of it if I need to in case there's something hidden behind it or if I'm playing a game and I no longer feel like I need to be monitoring my frame rates and temperatures I'll usually go ahead and close that down and you can also do screen captures in here too if you want I usually will do this on JPEG and I like to use F12 as my screen capture button and you can change where you want your screenshots to go whichever folder it is and then you can take screenshots of the games that you are playing and you can do benchmarks with this program too if you want to get your average minimum and maximum frame rate. Unfortunately, it doesn't do things like frame time, so it's you can't really get like 1% and 0.1% lows. So it's not super detailed, but if you ever want to get averages, you know, and minimums and maximum frame rates, then you can do that. And you could set some keys in here for the benchmarking. So I would usually do like page down. And for ending recording, I usually use the end key. And then you could set wherever you want these to go and you can change this all around and customize it the way you want. Use whatever keys you like. A lot of options in here to be able to customize this. But this is basically the settings that I use for all my systems. If I'm ever, you know, just monitoring frame rates and temperatures, this is how I like to do it. And obviously you can kind of go from there and customize it the way you want different texts different colors, different layout. If you don't want GPU, memory, CPU, you can leave certain things out of that if it's not that important to you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Once again, if you want any links to where you can grab Afterburner, the skin that I'm using, or if you wanna go over to CD Keys and save yourself some money on games this holiday season and support the channel in the process, that'll all be down in the description below for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it informative in any way, Show your support by leaving a like on the video down below and subscribing if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys next time. Turn up.